Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to talk about scaling materials. So when I say scaling materials, what I don't mean, I don't actually mean like importing a material and resizing it. I'm talking about when the material is applied to a surface and that surface changes, what happens to the material? So you guys have probably seen this sometimes. You change geometry and it like you get like repeating patterns of that material. Other times you move geometry and stretches. And I've seen this on the forum quite a few times. If you don't, if you're not on our forum already, check it out, forums.sketchup.com. And uh, people are getting a little bit confused about what happens when. So I've made a bunch of cases, examples of how materials might work on a specific geometry. And we're gonna take a look at where, when they scale versus when they tile right now. All right. So I have material right here, uh, just to show you. This was just a, a face I imported this material onto. So this is undistorted. This is the default look we have right here. Then, going down this way, I made a bunch of boards. They're 10 inches by an inch by three feet long. So that's what we got right now. So this is the normal, we're gonna look at loose geometry. Then we're gonna look at grouped geometry where the faces are painted. And then we have grouped geometry where the container is painted. So rather the faces are white, but the whole container has this material applied to it. So there is a difference in how they react. So let's let's take a look at how this how this works. All right, so down here, I got my loose geometry. I'm gonna keep this as just kind of a control. I could have put a little tag on there. I guess it says control. Uh, right here, um, I'm just gonna come in. I'm going to use push-pull, grab this face right here, and pull it. Look what happens. See that? It's repeating. So as I as I make this longer, that material that that material is just going to repeat again and again and again because the material is exactly three feet long. So the material ends where this this board does. So when I push pull, it just keeps bringing that same material out over and over again. Just reapply, 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 end to end. So if I grab all of this minus the text, and I hit scale, and I grab my middle handle right here and I pull it out, look what happens. It stretches, see that? So that's good to know right off the bat, loose geometry, and I'm doing this with the whole box, this is basically what this board is, all these pieces, but it would happen the same if I did just one, one edge down there too. Same thing, so as a face gets extended like this, it's gonna repeat as it gets stretched with scale, it is going to stretch the geometry out. So this is not a super high resolution image, but you can see uh, that worked okay for this particular image. If you have a lower quality image, when you start scaling, you might start seeing pixels and it might look kind of messy, but that's what happens. So straight loose geometry, here's what we got. All right, let's come over here to our grouped geometry. So these are, this is a copy of the same group. <clears throat> the materials were applied to the faces. So first off, I mean, there's a couple different things we could do here, right? Because I could, I can't push pull on a group. So if I go to push pull, it tells me, nope, no push pulling. So I do have to double click to open the group and then I can use push pull and I'll grab this. And this is probably not a surprise. Some of you played around with this. It behaves exactly the same. Geometry, same thing. So if I was to come in here, same thing, grab this geometry and scale it, I will get the same behavior I saw before. If I do that from the outside, I grab this, scale it, Again, probably not a surprise, but same behavior as before. So whether I scale the geometry inside the group, and I'm using group, same, the exactly same thing happens if it's a component. If I use scale on the inside or outside of a container, so a group or a component, it's gonna stretch just like it did. So basically, if the material is applied to the faces, so that means it's actually put on the faces, they behave the same. Now, that's pretty straightforward, right? That's simple. Push pull, just gonna reapply that material and it's gonna tile. Scale, it's actually gonna take this, the material and, and stretch out. Things get a little bit different when you paint on the outside of a container. So those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, this board was white and I just said, pick that material, painted it onto this board. So the container has a color right now. So if I look at entity info, see the container is colored with the wood. If I pick this one over here, it says there's nothing applied because they're actually, it's applied to the faces in this case 
Whereas in this one over here, if I come in, the face has no material applied, but the group does. So this, like I said, straightforward up to here and then er, breaks hit, not so straightforward. So I'm gonna double click. I'm gonna come in here with push pull, same as I did before. I'm gonna pull, same thing happens here. That makes sense. Again, still, basically if you push pull, you're not gonna, it's never gonna stretch your materials if you push pull. But what happens here if I scale? Let's do it on the outside first to test. Scale, and I'm gonna grab this, and I'm gonna start pulling it. All right, scale works the same way on the outside. What happens, I'm gonna undo that, if I come in here, grab this geometry, and hit scale. What? So I have an exception now. Because this material is being applied to the outside, it's basically being updated as I change the geometry inside, just like it would if I push pulled. So if I scale inside of a painted container, it's going to repeat this also. So there are the examples. Um, this kind of works hand in hand in a message that we often repeat around here, which is probably paint your faces and not a container. There are some, some rare situations where working with like models that come in pieces where I wanna paint the outside of the container so the whole thing has a single color and you can switch it real quick. Um, but in general, I would say if you didn't do this, so we'll just, if we just stick with these workflows over here, oh yeah, that's a terrible illustration. All right, so if we just did these things here, loose geometry and painted group, or painted faces inside of groups, you have very consistent results. In fact, I'm gonna take that a step further and say, you should really be doing just this in the middle. I shouldn't have loose geometry flying around my model. I shouldn't have paint on the outside of containers in general. So for the most part, if I create my geometry, apply materials to the faces, I can consistently know that if I go into that container push pull, I will get repeating geometry. If I scale the geometry inside or out, I will stretch the material that's on there. So this is kind of drives home a point that we've, we've illustrated quite a few times on this channel is the best way to get the most consistent results with materials is to paint your faces and then group your geometry. Or you can actually do it in either order. You can paint your faces, then group, or you can group and then go into the group and paint. Wait, did I say that backwards? Paint your faces, then create the group, or create the group, then go in and paint your faces. Either way works. Same results, and they are consistent. So I hope that came across, that, like that made sense. Uh, the results are consistent regardless, so no matter which one of these situations you have, the same thing happens each time. It doesn't stop randomly. Sometimes this happens, sometimes this happens. It probably seems that way uh, if you're not careful about your modeling. Um, like I said, generally speaking, just don't paint your groups and components. Paint the stuff that's inside of them instead. And don't, I mean, unless it's during the modeling process, like you're making a piece right now and you haven't grouped it yet, you really shouldn't ever have loose geometry just hanging out in your model. Everything should end up in a group uh, or container, or a, I'm sorry, a group or a component uh, sooner rather than later. So if that's the case, very consistent. And hopefully this makes sense. Like I said, this question's come up quite a few times uh, and I was surprised to find that, uh, you know, there was a difference, but it is consistent. It is the same every single time. If you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, they'll leave us a comment down below. Have you tripped up on this before? Is there any, have you done any experimenting and found a better way, a uh, better way to, to illustrate this to yourself or remember what to do? Uh, or do you have another idea that you think would make a good video? Leave it down in the comment. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.